Today, I'm just wondering what got y'all into anime. Like, what made you guys want to watch this shit at all? I'm just kidding. I don't actually care. I just need a segue for this video. But anyway, if you're a true OG, you got into anime through watching Toonami back in the day when it was airing on Cartoon Network. I mean, it's still on TV now. It's just who the hell is watching TV anymore? Back when people actually watched TV, Cartoon Network was the undisputed goat of channels between Disney and Nickelodeon. They just had the best catalog and the best roster there. And the victor was only clear with having Adult Swim a part of your channel. They easily clear all those other channels. Like, what the fuck does Nick and Knight have that it's gonna go against Adult Swim with? Oh, what, you gonna play the George Lopez theme or some shit? Nah, but for real, it's just Adult Swim has better music, man. The bumps just go so hard with all the songs they play and all these unique artists they have on the channel. Then Adult Swim had to flex even harder by making trailers for actual anime they play on Toonami. Toonami went above and beyond when they made these trailers. They had Peter Cullen himself come on and tell you that this anime is going to be fire. And they had Steve Blum here telling you the same thing, that this anime is going to be fire. So now you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. Well, this goes into the Toonami craze that I'm about to talk about today. I'm about to talk about another anime that was a pretty good hit on Toonami. By hit, I mean Sleeper, because it was more slept on, if anything. I don't even think enough people remember this anime. Today's series I'm about to talk about is called The Big O. The Big O is a badass mecha anime that incorporates a lot of mystery elements to it. This anime is made by one of the best studios in Japan, known as Studio Sunrise. You definitely know Studio Sunrise from all the shit they worked on, including all of Gundam, Cowboy Bebop, Code Geass, a couple other shit I'm probably forgetting about, but yeah, they worked on some big names. What makes the production of The Big O even more interesting is the fact that Cartoon Network went out of their way to fund this anime. In fact, they even helped co-create it. Could you imagine being liked by HBO enough for them to actually want to save your show? Anyway, this badass anime follows Roger Smith, a billionaire who works as a negotiator protecting Paradigm City from high-level terrorists. Roger Smith works as a Japanese Batman where he goes around fighting crime and his mysterious giant badass robot. The story focuses on the entire mystery of Paradigm City where people are trying to recollect memories that happened over 40 years ago. For some reason, no one remembers anything that happened from that time period. No one understands why this phenomenon exists, but there are some that want to reach the truth of it, even if it means taking extreme action. It's this confusing but interesting large-scale conspiracy that's built up and ready to flip the plot upside down at any moment. The Big O doesn't really get that deep until the second half of the series, so the entire first half operates like a typical fun Saturday morning cartoon. Simply put, you get to watch good guy punch bad guy in the face. Oh yeah! What is it? Just because it's episodic doesn't mean the characters aren't any fun. I actually like Roger as the MC. He's a simple and effective personality that's always charming to watch. Whether it's him sweet talking hoes or standing on business when it comes to these villains, he just has that classic MC feel to him. Roger's character is simple but also a breath of fresh air, especially when it's paired with the cadence of Steve Blum's voice acting. It just gives him that classic badass feel to him. It's like you're watching OG Batman. That's why I refer to Roger Smith as the Japanese Batman, even though he's not really Batman. He just carries a similar feel to how I saw Bruce Wayne. Then you have the other characters that also hold their charm and purpose, such as Dorothy. Dorothy is an android that's slowly learning to become human each and every episode. Whether it's learning to love or learning to play piano as loudly as possible to annoy Roger every morning. The scrambled eggs that Norman has made for you have gotten cold. You stayed in bed 15 minutes later than usual. And that makes it okay for you to wake me up like this? Small but noticeable changes like that are in her character each and every episode, and I really love that little bit of detail. You also got the array of villains that are entertaining like Beck, a mafioso that just wants to make money and get his get back on Roger. Nothing deep about his character or anything apologetic to why he's a villain. He's just evil because he's evil, and I like that. It's simple. You also have Alex Rosewater, who's a corrupt CEO that Roger has to work alongside to protect the city. I really like how the show sets up nuance around how Roger has to operate. It makes this interesting dynamic where Roger has to work with clearly shady people in power, giving this story a lot more attention to simple good versus evil plot. Last but not least, I gotta go over my favorite villain in the show, Schwarzwald. He's a journalist that was put on the government hit list for a story lead that was too juicy to get out. My boy Schwarzwald earned himself the Journalist Medal of Honor by being hunted down by the CIA. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. 
How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? His whole goal now is to reach the truth of the memories and figure out what makes Paradigm City such an odd society, even if it means burning the whole city down along the way. There's a solid cast of characters that get the job done, but what really intrigues me about the series is the world itself. Paradigm City is such a unique setting with so much unraveled lore with a mass memory wipe on the human population and these giant robots and kaijus having some connection to the city. I just like the overall mystery slowly building up while the story continues. It keeps my eyes glued to the screen despite how episodic it starts off. Not that I'm shitting on the episodic formula, in fact I like it. It was made to have the perfect dub and viewed during a 2004 Saturday night. This show was made to exist for Toonami and to further display how creative anime really is. Weekdays at 5.30. Good guys still wear black. Only to mommy. Despite how much I like the ending to the Big O, I could definitely see people hate this ending. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, bitch. The second half gets deeper with its plot. However, it's very confusing and people can get easily lost with what's happening near the end and not even get what it was going for. I think the ending to the Big O is brilliant, however, not everyone is a TV show reviewer wanting to analyze shows for YouTube reviews and sounding smart online. So yeah, the ending will probably be a huge 50-50 for anyone watching it, but I, I have hope that you'll like it, I think it's a good ending. I also need to bring up the fact that it's episodic, because I know a lot of people for some reason just dislike episodic formula and villain of the week shit. It's not a real issue, I just bring it up because I know some people may not like it, but I would recommend sticking with it because it's still fun and does add to the show with every Everything else I said good about the Big O. If you really aren't into the episodic formula, then you know what? I respect your opinion. And ah, uh, psych nigga, I would never say that shit. No, the Big O is great. It is a great anime, top tier mecha. You need to watch it now. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to another J Classic. We got another video on the way when, when I feel like making it because I, don't, I, I got other shit to do, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I owe you guys more videos in the future, so be sure to stay tuned and keep supporting my channel. I appreciate y'all.